I would venture to say if you own a Pilot Parallel, it is the most useful and modifiable pen in your collection. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of using a Pilot Parallel pen, its maintenance and care, and then all the different modifications that you can do to increase the usefulness of the Pilot Parallel. And I'm going to go from tame to things that aren't so tame. Let's just say a knife is involved and of course a Dremel and even a chopping board scraper. As you can see from the not so subliminal subliminal message that I'm writing here, I'm using a Pilot Parallel. Kinda. And we'll get to the kinda. As for the basics, the parallel comes in 1.5, 2.4, 3.8, and 6.0, and you can buy them individually or in a set with all four of them. Just recently, they added the 3.0 and 4.5, which is a very useful size for me. And these numbers signify the width of the nib in millimeters. The parallels come with a couple of cartridges, which I threw away, but you can like uh, refill the cartridges. Instead, I just use a CON40 uh, converter. You can also use a CON50, but a CON70 is too girthy. It also comes with a small bulb syringe, but I threw that away and just used my standard one. I just didn't want to have a bunch of um, bulb syringes lying around as I've got about a dozen. Uh, pilot parallels but I really don't even use that bulb syringe to clean it because it's just so easy to take apart and clean very quickly and unlike other fountain pens where you don't really want to always be taking it apart every time you change ink I've taken these apart a million times and they really haven't gotten too loose or anything you basically pull the feed unit with the colored collar on it out of the section and then after that you can pull out the nib. There's an o-ring you can see it there at the base of the thinner protrusion from the feed that you need to make sure you keep it on there at all times. This is a close-up of the feed after you've taken the plastic collar off. To reassemble it you put the plastic collar back on ensuring that the hole on the plastic collar is over the little notch that's in the end of the feed. If you try to put it on upside down, you know, with the hole away from that notch, it'll just be difficult to put on, so you'll know. Basically, what I'm trying to show here is that feed works on all the collars and it works on all the nibs. So you could take, say, the blue collar and put in the orange nib, which is the smaller nib, and it'll still fit. The main reason you have these colors is so you can match up the collar and the end cap and know what size nib you have in. It's just a way of keeping track of it. And then there's a little plastic thing you can use to floss in between the tines if you get, like, say, paper fibers in it or something. One of the fun things you can do with the Pilot Parallel is do kind of gradient colors. When you have two Pilot Parallels with different colors in them, you can hold their nibs touching like this, which is kind of weird, like the first time I saw it. And the bottom pen, it doesn't have to be really straight up and down, but it has to be the lower end pen, is the pen that you're going to write with and the color you start out with will be the color that was in the upper pen, which in this case was my 3.0, which had Tono and Limbs Superstar T in it. Then as that ink runs out, the ink that was in the bottom pen, in this case it's Fantanian's number 22, that starts to show back up again and then it writes like normal. We can also take a page out of using Japanese glass pens and use ink puddles. This one has Hiroshizuku Yamaguri in it, a brown, and this one has Tags Edonezumi, which is a gray. I dipped my 3.0 into the gray ink, and it starts out with this really pretty kind of pink, gray, red ink. 
And then as the Edo Nezumi Gray ink starts to wear out, the Superstar T uh, pink color starts to show up. It's a really nice way to write. The advantage of using an ink puddle is that you don't end up messing up a whole bottle of ink. You can just put a, a little dropper full in the ink puddle and then use that to dip your pen into. If you don't have an ink puddle, you can just use like a, a teacup saucer, any small plate, and put a couple of drops of ink in there and then just dip your pen into it. Again, I'm still using the 3.0 with the pink Superstar uh, T ink in it, and I'm dipping it into an ink called Snowflake, which is a very, very watery blue base with a lot of glitter in it. And this basically just kind of lightens up that pink. And then as I write longer without dipping it, it turns back into its regular kind of reddish pink color. This is a pretty straightforward, fun thing to do for me, but something that a lot of people and websites talk about um, doing that makes your writing look interesting is to tap your pen and get a couple little splots of ink on your paper. This never works for me. I end up just slinging my pen everywhere. What works best for me is holding the nib perpendicular to your lips and then blowing through the nib and then ink kind of sprays out. It can be a nice effect over at the top of your writing. Next, we're going to talk about modifying the Pilot Parallel. And many people don't like the way the Pilot Parallel looks. It's just, you know, it's plasticky and a little bit cheap. So this first modification is done by the Red Dragon Pen Company, run by Brian Chu. He makes pens that take the Pilot Parallel nib, and you can use it with the Pilot cartridges, or you can use silicon grease and use it as an eyedropper, except for the wooden ones he makes. Um, these are really pretty, and I've been wanting to get one, but he mainly sells them at pen shows, and so he will be at the Raleigh Pen Show and the DC Pen Show. Here, Nicola Pang from Entropy Inc. did this beautiful calligraphy using Brian's um, parallel pens. We're going to do two modifications on the nibs of the Pilot Parallel, and one of them, if you don't want to do, you can actually buy it from Nick from his website, Entropy Inc. I can't talk much further about modifying the Pilot Parallel without talking about Jake Rainus. This is the top page of his website, and I'll leave all of his information in the show notes along with everybody else's stuff. One of the topics on his website is hacking the Pilot Parallel. And just about everything that I'm talking about here in this video, he has written out in instructions and pictures. And he also has a video showing how you can do the two different modifications I'll be showing here on my video. But even if you're not interested in the Pilot Parallel, you need to check out his website because he has all kinds of information on calligraphy. He's got like instructions on how to do it. You can download like guides um, to practice your calligraphy on. And then he also sells like booklets and stuff that you can download to learn calligraphy. Here's a random shot from his Instagram page. And of course it's beautiful calligraphy, but this has a nice, fresh kind of modern edge to it. And it's getting now where these calligraphers are just flat out artists. It's really beautiful. This is the first nib modification that I'd like to show you. And it basically requires you to use a disc on your Dremel to make the slit into the nib of your Pilot Parallel. Jake's video shows you how to do this. I don't have that disc for my Dremel because basically my Dremel was just a, a little doggy tool to trim your dog's nails. 
but I bought my two modified nibs from Nick Pang from Entropy Inc. And what this basically does just allows you to write with a double line like this. Jake shows how to modify a 6.0 parallel nib and uh, Nick Pang sells, I think, um, all sizes of modified nibs. The next kind of modified nib we're going to look at is a curved nib or like a folded nib. This blog post, Wibble Wibble, a Drewscape blog, has a very important point that he emphasizes. He had made a folded nib in a video and they had some problems with it. But the big takeaway that he got was you really need to pay attention to the little dimples on the nib. Here, looking straight down on the nib, you can see these little divots or dimples. And what they do is they hold the two separate plates of the nib slightly apart so that ink can run down in between them. Here, as I turn the nib to the side, you can see those dimples holding the two plates separated. According to Drewscape, each side of the nib has a dimple and you need to maintain at least one of those dimples when you cut away on the nib. So with a sharpie, I marked the shape I wanted on the nib and then used my little doggy Dremel. I then used a straight up nail file to kind of smooth out the writing edge and the sides. I like to use whatever is available around the house. We live in a pretty small apartment, about a 10 minute walk from the Imperial Palace. So I don't have a lot of room to keep all kinds of tools. Ah, look, a hangnail. I then floss the nib to get any kind of grit out and then put the nib back into the feed. I rinsed it off and here you can see the divots on that one side. I maintain that divot, but you end up cutting off the divot on the other side. Here you can see I basically have three writing edges. I have a 90 degree corner, which is on the bottom right edge of the nib and that's a very thin line. And then I have that straight edge, which is a medium line. And then I have that curved portion, which is a very thick line. Here you can see I'm writing on that corner, which is a very thin line. And then I kind of start at the very side of that curved line. It has kind of a medium line. And there's the side again, it's the medium line. And then I go lower at an angle and I have a very thick line. It's pretty fun to play with. And there's an artist that teaches classes on using modified pilot parallels. Eileen Goldenberg teaches art classes using fountain pens and modified parallel pens. She has Zoom classes and will be doing a class in person at the San Francisco Pen Show. It's always interesting to see artists use fountain pens as their tools. And right when I was editing this video, I saw that my friend JP makes a Pilot Parallel Architect nib. I'll leave JP's spa nib works address in the show notes in the event that you would like to get this really cool nib grind on your Pilot Parallel. The next modification we're going to work on is increasing the ink capacity of the Pilot Parallel. Typically you would put silicone grease around these threads and then just use an eyedropper to fill in the body with ink. But I have a problem eyedroppering any non-demonstrator pen. I'll be happily riding along and then I'll want to quickly check the level of ink in my converter for some reason and I'll quickly unscrew the barrel and if it's eyedroppered I've just got through making a giant mess. So as a technique I would suggest that you use a piece of washi tape or masking tape 
and tape it around somewhere near the section to remind yourself not to unscrew that Pilot Parallel full of ink. Other than that, the most simple straightforward hack to get the most ink to your Pilot Parallel nib is to use the Opus 88 demonstrator. It's pretty straightforward. You just unscrew the Yovo number no. 6 nib unit out of the section of the Opus 88 and then take the Pilot Parallel nib unit out of its section and then push it into the section of the Opus 88 making sure you seat it pretty firmly. This is the inside of the section of the Opus 88 and you can see a rubber o-ring in there. Some people say to take it out and some people say to leave it in. So I know if I take it out, I'll probably lose it. So I just left the o-ring in there. To understand how this works so well is here is the inside of the section of the Pilot Parallel and you can see there is a definite ledge there. It's like a smaller circle and a ledge. This skinnier part of the feeds unit fits in through that ledge and then butts up against the o-ring that's on the end of the feed. Here you can see the pilot parallel next to the section and how that would go through the inside of that shelf. Here you can see the pilot parallel nib unit up against its own section and the Opus 88 section. You can see where the end with the o-ring on it will butt up against the shelf of the pilot parallel section. But if you look on the right where the Opus 88 section is, it's a little skinny part that will butt up against that shelf. So it's good to kind of have that shelf a little bit lower there. Because to function a lot like the Pilot Parallel, you want the ink to go down the skinny section and not around the sides of the fins. Since the Pilot Parallel nib unit fits into the Opus 88 demonstrator, will it fit into the Opus 88 flow? And I'm sorry to say the answer is no. No on the flow. The pencil case blog in their review agrees with me that now with the flow, you can't hack it with the Pilot Parallel nib. But let's take a look at the section. Here is the inside of the section of the flow and you can see it has a little shelf. The parallel nib unit does fit in there, but the shelf is all the way on the back end and this is what your nib looks like in the section. For right now, it writes just fine even though it looks really weird. And surprisingly, there is no ink leakage out of the section I thought there would be and I've even shaken the pen around, but there's no leakage. So we'll have to see. It might be partially because this is a Japanese style eyedropper and you can close off the ink reservoir to the section, but I'm not sure why this is kind of working. So for right now, I'll continue using it. I just won't take it outside the house or something or travel with it. My flow has a honker 2.3 nib, so I think I can do without the parallel if this doesn't work out. Now we'll try to put the parallel nib unit into other pens. These pictures are from Caitlin's Nest on Instagram and she stuck them inside of a Moon Man M2. She said it didn't work in her EF pen, but two out of her three F pens did work. And in her Moon Man Wansai Mini, the EF worked, but not the F. She says they work fine, but they're just a little loose, so she stores them nib side up in a cup at home. The user Cryptonauts on Reddit did the same thing, but ran into the problem of getting too much ink coming out into the nib. The pen on the right hand side does not have Cryptonauts modification, and the left side does. And so I'll try the modification. I don't have a Moon Man, but I do have a Trammel, so I'll give it a try. 
The advantage that the Moon Man and the Trammel have over the Opus 88 pens is they are considerably cheaper. You can probably use the parallel nib unit in any section that it will fit in, but you'll run into two problems. It may possibly leak, or it may just give you way too much of an ink flow if the fit isn't just perfect. Kryptonaut's hack was to basically use a nib collar and cut off just the top part to reduce the flow to the nib unit. Here's the collar and first I tried a box cutter on it and then I tried a knife. Like I said, I just kind of used tools that are around the house. But what ended up working was a bench scraper. It's those little tools you use to kind of scrape up all the stuff that you chopped up on your cutting board. Those things are sharp. Here's the sawed off part that's going to go over the top of this nib. And this is how I'm going to stick it into the section. I added a small thin o-ring right on the inside of that collar screw in part. And then I screwed those two pieces into the section and it looks like the flow is really good. It's not too heavy or anything. The nice thing about the section on the trammel is that it gets more slender toward the nib. It wrote very juicy but not too heavy and I didn't have any problems with it leaking at any time. I'll have to give you an update on it later. And here's a picture of the leak test on both the Opus 88 demonstrator and the trammel. I just let them sit around like this for about a day. In the end, to make the ultimate leak proof pilot parallel mod, you want the ink to only go down that center slit on the center part of that feed, not around the sides. So I'm going to attempt to put the whole Pilot Parallel feed into a collar. I'm going to use my pen BBS 355, but the collar is stuck in the section. So I ended up kind of screwing it out with a rubber band over the top of a chopstick. Here's the cleaned up section. Since the Pilot Parallel feed is girthier, then the pen BBS nib collar, we're going to have to use the Dremel. I found that it worked best with this kind of circular motion. I'd do maybe about 20 little circles and then try to fit it into the collar. Once the feed fit into the collar, I screwed the whole unit into the section and assembled the pen. I didn't worry too much about any dust particles. I just kind of rinsed off the feed and that seemed to be fine. Again, I added a small O-ring inside the pen BBS collar. I did my little leak test and that's not ink there on the bottom. That's just the material of the pen. And it wrote just great. Again, nice and juicy, but not too much ink where it was bleeding all over the place. And you can see in this section, there's just not a big blob of ink. The flow looks really good. So far, these different mods using the Pilot Parallel nib unit seem to be holding up okay. They're not leaking and they're writing just great. Of course, I'm only showing you my successes. I had a couple that didn't work out too well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you got something out of it, I'd appreciate a like or a subscribe. And if you have any other Pilot Parallel Pen hacks, let me know in the comments.